So I think we all have to be honest about A Train to the End of the World. This will either be the best or the worst show of the season. Like, this is the type of show that there's no in between. As it stands, I think it's running up Mount Everest. I think it's trying to get to the finish line and doing so elegantly. But this is the type of show that with one wrong move, one stumble, you can quickly see how it would snowball into a mess that either doesn't make sense or is too convoluted to be enjoyable. I mean, even though I wasn't someone who disliked how Wonder Egg Priority ended, there's a reason why the general discussion of a show like that shifted after the ending. Like, people, a m large majority, didn't like it, right? I don't know if this one will suffer a bad ending of sorts or a bad middle ground or something. I hope not. But this has so much potential to be one of the most creative things that we're going to see this decade. I'm going to throw that out there. I really think that this could be in the same level of a Madoka Magica. I mean, I quite like Girls Last Tour. Maybe not the most mainstream thing, but that show was absolutely phenomenal. There are these shows that really try to do something different, but because of how much it's trying to do, one wrong move and it will tumble. Now, the good thing for me is usually when these shows tumble, it doesn't ruin my entire enjoyment, but I know for the anime community it does. Do I think it's going to nail it based on these two episodes? So far, yes. They're not rushing into a big event. Like, the first episode was very good at kind of like, establishing the 7G, the kind of weirdness, okay, people are now animals, and here's this mystery of going on the train. This episode, Mother Nature's trying to kill us. Big ass waves trying to take us out, we can't go back, the railroads are completely screwed, and apparently plant life might also, might want to kill us. I don't know, like, I, I might just be an idiot, that's fine, I don't care. I'm not an expert on plants, but uh, the way that thing was trying to grab us very quickly, I, I feel like 7G has messed with more than just people. The environment itself, plant life, the wildlife, it's more alive than I think it's than just natural occurrences. Sure, the water stuff could could just be water levels rising, big waves coming in. But I don't know, man. I feel like there's some weird shit going on. I don't think this is all a dream. I don't think we're going to go that route. I do think the dog's gonna die at one point. I think that dog has a death flag. If any of these characters are gonna not make it, I think it's gonna be the dog for extra sting. One of the characters might turn out to be crazy, I could see that happening, but in general, this trip to Ikebukuro is, uh, I mean, at some point we're getting off the train, I feel like. Then again, could we do that if it's in the name? That'd be a twist. They lose the train, have to go through the woods and shit. Frick, I don't know, man. But, uh, can you say anime of the season? Full live reaction over on my Patreon if you want to see my full and thought the, to this or any of these episodes are going to be over there if you're interested. So, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I'm seeing a lot. This is, this is my favorite type of show to cover. 100% always will be. It makes you think, it makes you theorycraft, makes you ponder, and the best part is no one can tell you you're right or wrong because it's an anime original. And the thing about a show like this is that when it casually ends an episode with some woman who immediately had a face that I didn't trust, and you pan upwards and you see a goddamn mushroom growing from her head, I'm like, oh... Yeah, I really don't trust her now, because even if she's the nicest person on paper, she has a goddamn mushroom coming out of her brain. Her brain clearly can't function properly anymore. There's a mushroom growing from her brain. Like, the fungus has got to be messing with her. She's going to chop us up into stew, or just do some dumb shit. Maybe she'll be real nice and pleasant. I don't know. But either way, there is an element of mystery to this world, and I love how eccentric the characters are. Last episode, we had the train conductor who can turn into a handsome man and if he takes his cap off he's this old cripple man this episode a dude in a freaking d swan boat comes paddling in tries to like give us this information and just wants like something and then he ends up getting some cigs and he's all happy but it's like i don't know if it'll be an ongoing gag that we meet like some elderly crazy person who ends up kind of helping us but also seeming weird as hell but i'd be okay with that but in general you know we get some good character moments we get some good subtler moments before the giant wave comes in to try to kill us before the you know the plants are i thought we were about to get strangled i didn't know but either way 7g messed with this right like it's and i really hope the reason this show came together is because there's just some loony some wackadoo some conspiracy theorist junkie who's on you know working with an anime studio and they're like listen greg over here the dude's a 
the dude's a fucking idiot. Like, he's just crazy, but damn, does he make good anime scripts. And I hope they just let this crazy bastard cook, even though he's probably believing all the bullshit. <laughs> and he's like, Seven G's gonna be the death of us all. Because in general, now now we're getting some crazy-ass anime. Obviously, it's not actually down that. that. That was a joke in case people don't understand sarcasm. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just funny to think about because I don't know who let whoever cook but I thank them for it, though I do recognize that this is the type of show that, if cooked for too long, could become either so crazy it's not entertaining or so crazy it misses the mark. So far, I have hope. I'm just being honest. Right now, I'm saying this could end up easily being the best of the season, and sure, it's possible it could end up being one of the best, but maybe it's not 100% great, and maybe it's gonna be like, it's not 100% the worst, but it's not, you know, uh, average. Like, there is middle grounds this show can reach, but in general, these are the types of shows that go to too extreme. A large majority say it's the best of the best or the worst of the worst. These shows usually slip around the midway point or towards the end. I'm hoping it doesn't, but I don't know if there is going to be plot twists, what the plot twist will be. And even if they don't go death, even if they don't go like, oh my god, this girl's crazy, she's locked up in a loony bin. If the world is as it is, and what we see is what we're going to get, just 7G mess with the world, the fundamentals of Earth, people, this, that, and the third, I still don't see how I wouldn't say this could be one of the best. Like, that is going to be enough. Their intro hook is enough, but I'm skeptical of everything that I see. The way that plant, like, roped onto us, like, that... I was like, goddamn, 7G really messed with wildlife, huh? Like, why why are they developing that fast? Like, it's like time, like, as soon as they got through the fog, it's almost like time sped things up for that plant. And then with the water rising, sure, the natural rising was fine but then how quickly it then went and sure waves can do shit but it felt like 7g was doing some crazy shit that's all i'm saying like it's almost i'm not sure if it's like things are alive or it's just more of like things happen faster than they should at least in that foggy area i don't know all I know is they can't go back. I imagine they also can't do Morse code anymore with the tapping of the railroad tracks because, well, they're all ripped apart now. This is gonna get crazy, man. Like, this is getting more interesting, more creative, and the overall cast dynamic's interesting. I mean, they have some normal conversations, like, what are we gonna do about underwear? What are we gonna do about food? And then it's like, oh, I didn't ask you to come. It's like, well, bitch, if you did ask us to come, we would have had proper time to prepare. But hey, you're friends, and that's what friends do. They help you on suicidal missions. In general, the cast is fun. I'm liking the vibe. I'm liking the look. If anything, it gives me major Girls Last Tour vibes mixed with like, uh, I don't know, Wonder Egg Priority, something like that. It's just really cool with what they're going for, and I think this is currently one of, if not the strongest that we're watching, at least I know for me anyway, and I hope they don't trip and fall, and if they do, it's only minor tumbles, because I want to see these bitches climb to Mount Everest to the very tippity top. But that's my feelings on episode two of A Train to the End of the World. What did you think? Theories and speculations, I'd love to read them if you got any. Down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell so you can know if I want to upload more, and like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on my Patreon, and hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today, we got Jewel, Monster Enthusiast, Akito, James the Best, Eris Katsiris, and we also have Eater Cardenas. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.